scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time it's going to make you attain whatever stature that christ wants you to attain thank you now i had the honor and the privilege to have been mentored by a great man that i love so much in life and in death dr miles munro of blessed memory and I am honored, even as I stand today, doing what he did while he was alive. Because he was a man whose philosophy and whose idea about God and life was spectacular. In his lifetime, he was an advisor to almost 16 presidents of nations, even as a man of God. He had written several books and at least 40 of them were bestsellers. He was exceptional by every standard, whether from a secular standpoint or from a spiritual standpoint, had the largest church in Bahamas and was doing exploits for the kingdom. In fact, when Nelson Mandela came out of prison, he and one other person were among the delegates that were sent to go and receive him. And he was a man that truly understood leadership, his philosophy of leadership was to transform followers into leaders and then leaders into agents of change my brothers my uncles my fathers i want you to lend me the next 20 to 30 minutes of your attention i assure you that what you are about to learn are not the opinions of people trying to guess and shadow box their way through life like I did acknowledge yesterday I want to do same again that my communication this morning and as always is not in any way to downplay the pedigree of the people here we have very noble personalities at every level seated here and listening to me and I count it an honor and a privilege to be sharing and contributing to our success I by no means will want to downplay our pedigree i had the honor and the privilege of rushing to the mcpherson university just to pray with them before coming here awesome facility brilliant leaders there and so i know that there are people here who have tasted success at different levels but can i tell you this i have learned through experience and through mentorship that the enemy to your next level is your current level it is not even failure. It evades you to succeed. But your current level of success can peg you and stop you from rising to the next level. Write this word success down. Let's talk for a few minutes about it and then we'll tie up one or two things. Is God helping us already? Please write that word success down. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 is a very interesting book. Joshua was a young man who was taking the baton of leadership from Moses. And he was afraid already and, you know, very, very discouraged because he was leading a people that even God and Moses acknowledged were a stiff-necked people. And so he was afraid. And when we get to Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8, an instruction was given to him that becomes for us a manual to a life of success here's what it says this book amazing that success is with a book this book of the law 
shall not depart from out of your mouth it says thou shall meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein then shall thou make your way prosperous and thou shall have good success two words that came from the lips of god prosperity and success and he shows us the formula to it are we together praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord amen so i ask you to write the word success down to succeed means to do well in its basic understanding the idea of success means to succeed means to excel to succeed means to advance to succeed means to surpass ordinary standards please write it down every one of us seated here listening to me and as many who will follow listening online today or any other day whether we admit it or not there is a desperate craving and a desire within us to succeed and find ourselves make progress in fact i'm glad that there are doctors in our midst psychologists will tell us that one of the indices that measure fulfillment is progress you find fulfillment to the degree to which you perceive that you are making progress can i tell you this the frustrations that we face in our lives our families our career that eventually translate into ill health are largely a product of a perception that we are not succeeding when you are given the gift of time and it looks like you are unable to make any good out of your time and then it becomes more frustrating when you are surrounded by contemporaries who are advancing not from a standpoint of jealousy but their advancement kills your excuses are we together men today in our world are an endangered species doctors will tell us that it seems as though women seem to have a higher lifespan than men more so african men it is said i don't know what the current statistics are but it is said that the average lifespan for an african man is about 48 years if that is correct that's a terrible announcement what suddenly happens to a young boy full of fire and ambition becomes a teenager becomes an adolescent now begins to run and support a family and then 30 40 50 60 years down the line respectfully speaking is now a frustrated man looking at the world from a very painful standpoint this is the graph of the average man's life born goes to school gets a job if fortunate or runs a business gets a wife and children now from that standpoint is like a downward plunge of frustration hit by a plethora of problems and bills and family problems and witchcraft and sociological problems and problems that downplay and demean his relevance now by the time he's getting to late 40s early 50s he begins to have all kinds of signs of problems heart conditions high blood pressure headache arthritis all kinds of things and now the man is afraid because at 50 maybe 55 he's not built a house the children may not be as responsible as he intended for them to be his family life does not be it's not a reflection of his idea as a young man and if not fortunate it begins to affect his spiritual life in the name of jesus christ the man in this place will change this narrative the world today is full of frustrated men so frustrated that during month the world receives remembers and celebrates mothers but when it is father's day 
most times it is that morning people remember that today is father's day because they happen to go to the internet to search for something and find out and they casually say father and say this was what i wanted to become if not then pay attention is god speaking to us we may not be able to do anything about yesterday but we can do something now to correct the time that is left show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the footsteps of jesus we want to enter your rest at the end of your life you will be remembered for two things the solutions that you produced the lives that you changed or the troubles and the frustrations that you left behind we have the gift and the privilege of life and let me share with us in this first session god's idea of success and the dimensions of success and then we'll talk a bit about becoming a voice listen it is never god's idea that in a whole generation and a dispensation we have just one or two people excelling and glorifying god with their gifts and their talents it is painful when you watch television and you see those who were once your classmates changing destinies affecting lives and all that is left with you is bitterness and anger why is my life this way this is not to annoy you this is to challenge and provoke you are we together haven't understood the basic concept of success and haven't understood also that a dimension of your fulfillment is tied to your success please do not downplay the passion and the instinct for success it was put there by god there is no man who will indefinitely live in failure and find fulfillment you may ignore it for a while but it will haunt you and you will pay your life you will spend your lifetime paying that price there are six indices to measure success and i want to state them very quickly so every time you say i want to succeed i want to break it down for us by the spirit of god there are six indices if you do not succeed by these parameters you are a failure can we begin sirs? number one the first index that is used to measure your success progress your spiritual progress your spiritual health please write it down the first biblical index to measure success if you want to test if you are successful or if you are on the path to success as a man the first biblical index is your spiritual health here's how the bible puts it we are rushing for time it says that you prosper and you be in health even as thy soul prospereth what shall it profit a man it says if he gains the whole world and loses his soul we have men today in our society who use their godliness and their spirituality as would i call it the collateral for success the kind of success that happens at the expense of your spiritual life your spiritual fire your spiritual fervency is a demonic and dangerous success there is a kind of success called good success please say after me good success that means there is bad success 
the kind of success where as you are rising financially or as you are rising in influence your spiritual life is suffering i made up my mind that if i fail in any area of my life let it not be my spiritual life great men great leaders listening to me this this morning is a call for some of us to restore our spiritual passion this appetite to make it this appetite to make it study the word i do not have time pray i do not have time our families today respectfully speaking may be a reflection of the spiritual decadence that are happening in our lives do you know i believe it is a cause for a man to wait for his children to pray for him no no you should be the one to lead them in understanding spirituality the first idea of spirituality from a child should come from what he sees his father do not what his father saying doing something more than gold i've got something more than gold something more than gold i've got something more than gold if all i have is jesus i've got something more than gold i will tell it to my world jesus is more than gold listen to me let me challenge us men we complain today that our young people are full of moral decadence full of unseriousness and irresponsibility my question is who led them every time a sheep is lost the shepherd must take responsibility it's in the bible until god grants us grace to raise men and women of spiritual excellence men who pay attention to spiritual excellence above and beyond any index for achievement spiritual success is not the only dimension of success but in order of priority it is number one let your children find you praying in the morning let your children find you fasting let your children find you in with passion for the word let your children find you with character and integrity so the first index to measure success is our spiritual progress can i tell you this let me with every sense of respect and honor remind us that the day is going to come if christ tarries every one of us will be no more it's an uncomfortable truth but it's a truth that we know if christ tarries one day you and i will have to sign out of this realm I used to sing an old hymn in the seminary it says thus will we pass from the earth and its toiling only remembered by what we have done only remembered only remembered only remembered by what we have done thus would we pass from the earth and its toilings only remembered by what we have done this is a call this morning to examine our lives spiritually your relationship with god and the level of spiritual fire if you find out that somewhere in your pursuit for a job your pursuit for a political career your pursuit for a name your pursuit for fame you have left jesus somewhere this is a conference that challenges you to rush back and say i am back oh lord i'm not ashamed today i am 55 years i dropped you when i was 22 because i wanted to go abroad by force now i am back no matter what you have if jesus is not part of them and if jesus is not above them have nothing are we blessed second index very quickly the second index according to scripture to measure success 
is your level of mental transformation please write it down i'm glad and honored that i'm talking to men the second index that measures the success of a man is not cars is not money the level your level of mental transformation you are successful only to the degree to which you sustain superior belief systems please write that expression down superior belief systems superior belief systems for as he thinketh in his heart the bible says so is he not so he will become for as he thinketh in his heart it is very important proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7 let's run through a few scriptures please proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7 I want us to read it together if it's possible if we have that projected 23 and verse 7 proverbs if you can see it projected please let's read together one to read for as he thinketh in his heart so is he not so he will become you are literally your life gravitates along the lines of your belief systems if there is anything wrong with your results the problem results are report cards that attempt to honor your belief systems please pay attention please pay attention if i find out that my life is commanding failure i'm always having financial problems family problems fulfillment problems it is not the problems the problems are a report card that something about my belief system keeps attracting limitations to my life the real deliverance for a man is not just casting out demons the real deliverance is reconstructing your belief system so that you have what the bible calls the mind of christ philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 it says let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus I admit to you that many of us are sincere god fearing well-meaning people but largely we may have sustained belief systems that came from culture that came from our past that came from poor mentorship that came from our failures that came from wrong opinions we may have sustained these belief systems and today they are producing negative results in our lives belief systems that sponsor greed belief systems that sponsor laziness belief systems that sponsor irresponsibility belief systems that sponsor entitlement when you come to god among the many things he does is to reconstruct your belief system there are many people who believe today that their success is in the hands of someone else and they believe that somebody should succeed and come and make them successful this is the mindset sadly speaking that the average respectfully speaking the average young man in this country has an entitlement mentality let my father die and give me land let my father die and give me a house there are even young people who continue to anticipate the death of their parents in their lifetime they are already discussing where are the papers to this land where are the papers to this belief systems we are products of our belief systems your belief system represents your ideology a sum total of your philosophies what do you know about god and who taught you what do you know about satan and who taught you what do you know about succeeding and who taught you what do you know about failure and who taught you it matters the construction of our belief systems 
There is a way the Bible says that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Let me tell you something. Growing up, I had the opportunity to see some of the finest, most godly, and most sincere people that I would say then were around my life. But my life was surrounded by people who were truly failures by several standards. I saw my own father do his best, great man. I'm privileged to still have him alive. And he was one person that I saw God help, even among his contemporaries, to rise and make progress. But there was a widespread, from the region where I came from, there was a widespread of failure. It was like a signature. And I said, this could not be God's design. How come people would live in mediocre, mediocre mindsets? I knew that something was wrong. And I made up my mind as a very little boy that in the name of jesus i would not live a life of failure and defeat that i would live a life that will represent the purposes of god that i'll have the privilege and the honor of contending for transformation until we help the nations call upon the name of the lord and glory be to the lord that project is still ongoing and successfully so hallelujah listen to me you must make up your mind that you will be transformed let me tell you a little story sir years ago there is a hotel called premier hotel in ibadan some of you know where i'm talking about it's uphill i came into ibadan many years ago i did not even have transport fair complete transport fair and i remember entering that hotel because someone i was to meet asked me to wait for him there i stood there and i looked at the place i said my goodness what a nice place i saw the faces of the people there it was night late into the night and the person disappointed me he said he would not be able to make it where would i spend the night now i didn't know anywhere and I would dare not even say I want to ask how much that place is. True story. Because I could not afford it, I was fortunate as I was strolling around. I found out there was a church not too far there. Fortunately, it was a Friday and they were having night vigil. I went and I, spent, I had night vigil there. At least if I cannot sleep, let me pray true story now let me tell you this three years after that time I had a program in Ibadan and when they picked me it was a convoy of about five to six cars and they were taking me to my lodge guess where they took me when I saw them climbing uphill I put my hand and I said my goodness my God this time around, it was not in shame and dishonor. I still saw the same faces. Some of them were still there. And they took me to the highest suit. And when they kept me there and locked the door, I lay on the ground and rolled down. I said, only a fool says in his heart, there is no God. And only a fool can say, God does not lift men. Listen to me. They have a little swimming pool outside. And all these my dear people, they were there swimming and I was watching them from my window. I said, it's not your fault. My, my protocol and they were swimming and enjoying themselves. And then I remember the Bible says a good man must live an inheritance for his children's children. Let me prophesy over someone in the name of Jesus Christ where you have seen shame and reproach after this conference by prophecy go forward go forward go forward go forward advance in the name of Jesus Christ anyone who has said you will see shame all your life I stand by the God of heaven and I prophesy to you in their lifetime they will watch you rise 
please sit down please sit down pay attention mental transformation i do not mean to sound arrogant and i pray that you forgive me if i sound so i'm only taking this opportunity because i'm talking to men and i hope and trust that what i'm saying might help to challenge you listen to me the color of my skin did not change the sound of my voice did not change my height did not change the only thing that changed was my mind no matter what changes in your life if your mind remains the same your result will remain the same the government can change your life will not change your location can change your life will not change the person you are praying for to die can die and yet nothing will change but if everything remains the same and your mind changes i promise you your life will change the real problem is not disfavor the real problem is not the senator who has refused to sign your contract the real problem is that there is something wrong with our philosophies and our belief systems the starting point for true success second only to your relationship with god is your philosophy abraham from where thou art lift up your eyes not where you want to go from where you are lift up your eyes the greatest miracle that happened in my life second only to salvation and my encounter with the holy spirit is the miracle of sustaining a superior belief system are we blessed number three very quickly the third index to measure success is the degree to which you excel in your god-given assignment write it down please the degree to which you excel in your god-given assignment your assignment can have an expression of your ambition your assignment is that which you were sent to do here on earth it says lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written of me lo i come in the volume of the book nobody here is a biological accident you can spend your life escorting others in destiny or you can find your place in life the degree to which you excel in your assignment jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5 god was speaking to the young man jeremiah and he said before i formed you help us media jeremiah 1 and verse 5 he says before i formed thee in the belly i knew thee and before thou camest forth out of the womb i satisfied thee and ordained thee to ordain means to commission to legitimize an operation i ordained you to be a prophet to the nations again dr miles munro of blessed memory would say the wealthiest place is not the gold mines of south africa the wealthiest place is not the oil mines in the middle east the wealthiest place is the cemetery where books that should be written were not written where policies that can change nations were not written the symmetry truly is the wealthiest place where apostles and prophets and evangelists pastors and teachers who would have manifested their destiny and blessed nations they died without becoming where businessmen financial apostles millionaires and billionaires who would supply resources for kingdom advance they died without manifesting Your assignment answers the question why why are you here Jesus said my meat is to do the will of him that sent me in fact here's how he put it I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day for the night cometh the night cometh where no man can walk again
at any level you can still find purpose and make them at any level at any level you can find purpose please listen to me don't say i am too old ask abraham don't say i am too young ask jeremiah don't say i am too weak ask gideon the bible is full of men that kill our excuses for purpose at whatever age stage and level there is still room to start make up your mind that there is something that god has put within me can i tell you this in your assignment is your relevance in your assignment is your honor in your assignment is your influence a mango tree does not produce posters a mango tree does not produce publicity material a mango tree is not called apostle or prophet all it does is to have big mango fruits if the mango tree does not have fruit men will pass it without knowing but the moment fruit starts to come it will start calling people and you will stand under it and even climb the mango tree if your life becomes like that mango tree no man will ignore you not when you are using your gift to serve a generation this therefore defines for us the secret of frustration if nobody is following you and nobody is placing a demand upon your life and your destiny the diagnosis is that you have not found your place in destiny the consequence of not finding your place in destiny is that you will be angry you will be frustrated that's why society is full of jealous and angry people praying for others to fail as a consolation and a succor to their own failure is god speaking to us you must challenge yourself this morning that in the name of jesus christ i will walk in the path of purpose in the name of jesus christ the books that must be written in my lifetime must be written in the name of jesus the money that my life should bring to the kingdom i will not relent until that happens can i challenge us man god rested only on the seventh day if you are not in the seventh day do not rest don't rest on the second day don't rest on the third day god only rested on the seventh day Number one, first index, your spiritual progress. Number two, your level of mental transformation. Are we still together, please? Number three, your assignment, the degree to which you have discovered your divine assignment. You can go to bed happy and you can wake up happy. If you are not walking in purpose, there is no reason why you should be claiming long life the bible says i shall not die but live and declare not just live and roam around the justification for longevity is that you are using the time to advance the kingdom you become untouchable to the degree to which your life supports kingdom come hmm. number four very quickly the fourth index to measure success is your health and physical well-being i'm very glad i was told that there is a session about mental health and so on and so forth the fourth index to measure success for any man seated here and listening to me is your health and your physical well-being I have a confession to make I didn't used to pay as much attention to my health as I do now do you know why because you see and and this may be a, a, a word of a word of advice for someone especially people in ministry one of the fathers of faith called me in the East after preaching in his conference and he called me he said apostle let me give you an advice be careful Africans kill their prophets he said you must pay attention to your health and because of realities like the miraculous divine health are we together and all these spiritual realities 
they usually for many people become the justification for careless living we eat anyhow we live anyhow and what we do not know that every time we are administering death upon ourselves it is painful to labor so much and not have the opportunity to enjoy your sacrifices of years because of carelessness your physical well-being and your health i made up my mind that from that time until forever i will pay attention to my health i had the honor of seeing uncles fathers senior colleagues i saw very agile and happy people become weak people now please don't feel sad if you are here and there's something wrong with your health in the name of jesus we are praying and we believe for the power of god to bring you healing in jesus name but can i tell you this there are most people today if they had paid attention to any healed health from its infancy it would not be beyond the level of management usually we just ignore it and we call it faith until it deteriorates to a level where it becomes an issue of concern we must pay attention to our health one scripture again that will help you and god rested very powerful scripture it is good to rest it is good to sleep we need our bodies for a long time and we must obtain grace from God. I can't remember where I was traveling. To. While I was traveling, the driver was driving so fast. And I asked him a question. It was, okay, I was going for a meeting. And he was running so fast. And I asked him a question. I said, are you the one going for the meeting? He said, no. I said, why are you rushing with me like this? People have died just for careless driving. Are we in agreement? On a road that is not a trunk, a road, they are still driving at 120 and 140. And in the next five minutes, they will still stop. No. Please, let's take responsibility over our longevity and our physical health. One of the ways that you keep yourself alive is to protect the kind of information that is around your environment. I tell you, our world is full of negative things that can depress you in less than 24 hours as a personal principle i am very disciplined about the information that comes around my ears why because there are millions of people depending on my knowledge of god depending on the truths and the sermons that come for them i cannot be so selfish to punish millions of people by not guarding my heart jealously you never find me around people gossiping speaking talking about this i don't have that time i'm on a project you must protect yourself the Bible says, listen very carefully. The Bible says a broken spirit can dry up the bones. Negative news, bad news. <laughs> True story. I pray my father does not watch this, this broadcast because of what I'm about to say. One time, my dad called my mom. And said she should never make cabbage for him again or something like that i said cabbage cabbage that is a blessing do you know what happened he was watching a documentary <laughs> and in that documentary they were talking about cabbage and i don't know what is it that cabbage carries and they started explaining a few things and i said you see for someone is happy about the gift of cabbage and a man who had eaten cabbage all his life if we were to kill you you would have been dead now and just because of a five or ten minutes marketing you now reject cabbage in the name of jesus let obtain grace to guard our eyes our ears and every information that comes to us now in as much as i am pro health at the same time i know that everything god gave us if it came from god it will not destroy you is that true because if you are done listening to the news and food experts are done with you you will live a fasted life forever because it will look as if there are demons in every food they will tell you orange has something that can kill you 
banana has something that can kill you even rice that you are eating you are about to die tomorrow and at the end of it there is nothing again to eat the bible teaches us how to eat well give thanks when you give thanks <laughs> Hallelujah. Everything you find in the Bible that they ate, you can eat it. If Jesus ate it, he ate fish, he ate bread, he ate corn, he ate figs. Manna came from heaven. It was even the angels themselves that sent it. Let's be careful. It's good to protect us, guard the information that we hear. Let's try another mic and see. Praise God. Are we still together? Very quickly, I have two more and we'll wrap up. Number five is God helping us this morning. The fifth index to measure success biblically is your financial prosperity. This is the fifth biblical index. To measure prosperity and success no matter how much you succeed if it does not translate into your financial well-being you are in trouble the subject of finance has been quite a controversial one all across the body of Christ with very sharp divides there are people who absolutely believe in the necessity of financial resources for their well-being their families and the advancement of their lives and then the other side of the pendulum we have people who for whatever reason may seem to have a problem with the blessing of the lord in both cases i know that there are exaggerations there are people who the context of their communication as far as finance is concerned is carnality materialism and all they teach you is just for self-aggrandizement you know there is just a promotion of flesh however let me submit to you that if you ever subscribe for a life of poverty it is a dangerous and a defeated life a man can prosper with the dignity of kingdom integrity financially speaking your attention and your heart still being on jesus while you live a life that is meaningful and useful can i tell you this lack of financial resources will cause you more pain than demon spirits i assure you if i ask all of us to submit prayer requests right now just write two things that you want god to do in your life i may be wrong correct me if i am but over 80 percent of us here our prayer request will have one expression or the other of financial advancement am i right if i'm correct shout amen it takes money to build a good house it takes money to give your children good education it takes money to live well yourself financial prosperity gives you options it grants you the grace to live a life of integrity it's a terrible thing to live your life worrying about money lack of financial resources can produce a plethora of compromises many times when we talk about when we talk about our children who compromise here and there they do not compromise because they have all the abundance they need it is lack of those financial resources that eventually lead to compromise finances we must trust god and obtain grace that God will bring us into financial Sabbaths. We must trust God for grace. That God will bless us even financially. I made up my mind that as a minister of the gospel and as a leader, that I will never raise a people who are just spiritually on fire. Listen, there is an angle of influence 
that is controlled by the availability of financial resources there is a degree of financial availability that must be there to escort you to the corridors of power and influence you cannot separate influence you cannot separate um well doing from the availability of financial resources i always say it this way the name of jesus is very heavy it takes financial resources to lift it up for the nations to see hallelujah the last index and then we'll wrap up to measure success is quality destiny relationships you are only successful to the degree to which you build quality destiny relationships if you ever will be fruitful in life you will have to do it on the basis of relationships everything in life produces on the basis of relationships it takes a relationship between a husband and a wife to produce children it takes a relationship between a man and the holy spirit to produce a life of exploits our world is relational if you do not understand the principles of relationships you might live a life of failure and utter defeat in my final session i'm going to be teaching us on the concept of fulfillment and one of the things that we'll be touching on is relationships i have benefited today from profitable and meaningful relationships relationship with god relationship with the holy spirit relationship with mentors and fathers relationships with colleagues and contemporaries relationship with sons daughters and proteges and mentees we live our lives immersed in relationships woe betides a man who looks back and finds out you are alone the bible says it is not good for man to be alone he was not just saying it in the context of marriage alone if you look back and there is nobody no shoulder you can cry on our society is full of lonely people wealthy but lonely educated but lonely there are parents in old age all their children desert them and they are alone here's what the bible says in the multitude of men is a king's honor have you been blessed this morning a quick recap in one minute before i wrap up my session the lord brought to our understanding this morning the idea of success that success means to excel to do well to advance and we said that psychologically speaking and even spiritually speaking there is a dimension of your fulfillment that is tied to progress you cannot feel fulfilled when you feel stagnated when you feel you are a failure and that god is not against our success he used two words for joshua prosperity and success and that i said there are six biblical indices to measure a man's success so when you say i am successful in the kingdom we must test what you have said against these six parameters number one your spiritual progress we said number two your level of mental transformation sustaining superior belief systems number three the extent to which you excel as far as your god ordained assignment is concerned number four your health and physical well-being number five the availability of financial resources the degree to which you are able to do well having financial resources and using it effectively for your own comfort your family the advancement of the kingdom and betterment of society and finally the degree to which you sustain quality relationships that help you know god help you preserve your values and help you contribute your quota to the advancement of the kingdom and nation building if you excel in these six areas then indeed you are successful can i tell you this 
based on these parameters even five over six is failure you must excel in all of them let me wrap up with this scripture genesis 24 verse 1 please let's arise as we pray genesis 24 verse 1 media please help us this is the last scripture genesis 24 and verse 1 please read with me if everyone if you can see it read with me ready one to read and abraham was old and well stricken in age and the lord had blessed abraham in all things now you're going to put your name where abraham is and read it as a prophecy and then we'll pray are you ready now and joshua selman was old and well stricken in old age and the lord had blessed joshua selman in how many things how many things turn it into a prayer please lift your voice thank you lord for this word i decree and declare as a visionary man i am making progress i advance spiritually i advance mentally i advance as far as my assignment and my god ordained destiny is concerned my career and my pursuit i advance in my health and my physical well-being i advance financially no poverty no lack i make definite intentional progress i advance relationally is someone praying father speak to us and grant us grace again oh god the bible declares they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the lord in zion take away shame and reproach from our lives grant us grace to advance intentionally lord in this second session we pray in jesus name that our hearts are open we have the hearing of faith and even the walking of miracles lord once the word comes let the sick be healed let the oppressed be delivered let those who have lost things receive restoration let chains that have helped people release them now and jesus be glorified in jesus name amen and amen the lord bless you and honor you again please be seated thank you it's been so inspiring for me myself just sitting back and watching the other aspects of the service the testimonies and every other thing it is good that we devote time to spend in the presence of the lord to grow to be built to be established the bible says they that be planted in the house of god it says they shall flourish in the courts of our god then it says that even in old age they will be fat and they will be flourishing this final session is one that i believe will inspire and bless us in no small way we run a school of ministry and um it's been on for eight years now and in one of the courses i teach the students on the concept of fulfillment and the Lord just placed it very strongly in my heart to just speak a few words along that line because there is only one thing that is greater than success fulfillment if you are successful alone and not fulfilled you are still a failure hallelujah so we're going to discuss fulfillment uh, for a few minutes now this session is divided into two the first half of it will be spent just teaching us further and revealing to us by the Spirit of God the keys that will help us to do exploits and then the second half of it we're going to pray do we love prayer and so we're going to pray and in that prayer by the grace of God we are going to be rebuking chains and destroying everything that is not of God. It is true that we have tabernacle to teach and to learn. 
but we must give room for the power of God to come and set the captives free and turn the lives of people around and move people forward you must go forward and if our God is for us then what could ever stop us and if our God is with us then what can stand again and if our God is for us then what could ever stop us and if our God is with us then what can let me start tonight again? or this session by prophesying to you that in the name of Jesus the one who died and rose again and the one who sent me here everything that has kept you in the same position I stand by the God of my covenant and I declare whatever it is we scatter it now we scatter it now by the power of the Holy Spirit please turn it into a prayer in one minute everything that has limited me limited my family limited my destiny I call by the blood of the Lamb here at this men's conference we declare be scattered be destroyed in the name of Jesus are there people of prayer here it must let you go he says say unto Pharaoh let my people go that they may go and serve me you are praying in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen please be seated please be seated the Lord bless you in Jesus name Psalm 90 verse 12 Psalm 90 verse 12 please help us media Psalm 90 verse 12 I'd like us to read this two times and after we read it I will tell you a story and then we'll begin to teach are you ready to read it's projected if you can see it or find it then we'll read together please one to read so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom one more time please so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom one day I was watching television quite a long time ago and it happened to be the announcement of the obituary of a man who had lived very old very long and it was just a two or three minutes advert but it struck me so much I had to develop a program that we now have added to the school of ministry from that one encounter I think the man lived to be into his late 80s or early 90s and then he passed on for whatever reason the children were able to preserve as many of his photos as they could find I don't know how they got photos from when he was a very young man very young baby you know that um you know black and white and very thick uh photos and then down to when he was a teenager young adult in his midlife and so on and so forth and they displayed while they were singing i think it was um i'll fly away oh glory i'll fly away when i die hallelujah by and by i'll fly away that was the song some glad morning when this life is over i'll fly away when i die hallelujah by and by I'll fly away and within two minutes they were they did a slide of that man's photos and I was in two minutes I saw the summary 
of an old man's life from when he was a baby a teenager an adolescence a young man in his adulthood in midlife old very old very very old the final hours on the bed everything was within two minutes and this scripture came to me i said if they had told that young baby that one day he will be an old man in the presence of his children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren the question now was the question of efficiency of living how effective did he live his life and i made up my mind i saw in that announcement the deceptive brevity of life that as old as that man is if you live to be in your mid 80s and 90s you are considered to be very old in our context today and yet the man died and then this scripture came to me teach us to number our days that as we sojourn and through our pilgrimage in this life we will really know the things that matter and not waste our time i want you to pay attention to everything i will say everything i will sing and everything we will do when it's all been said and done there is just one thing that matters did i live my life to honor you did i live my life for you when it's all been said and done all my treasures will mean nothing only what i've done for love's reward will stand the test of time lord your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find precious joy in married clay turning sinners into saints and i will always sing your praise here on earth and ever after for you've shown me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life when life is gone by reason of ministry i've had the honor and the privilege to mourn with many families i've had the honor and the privilege to communicate condolence to bereaved families and i have learned a few things about the futility of living life without fulfillment there are four stages i'm teaching now there are four stages to every man's life every man who is walking upon the face of the earth today young old very young very old regardless status regardless whether you are educated or non-educated whether you are a christian muslim or anything in between male female black white from whatever region every man under the sound of my voice will have to go through four stages of life and every one of these stages has an expectation from god and from destiny as far as exploits is concerned your ability to maximize these stages of life is what will ultimately culminate into what you call success fulfillment exploits and impact when you talk about the concept of being impactful and doing exploits your entire lifespan what you call lifetime what you call destiny 
destiny means your destination in Christ write this down please the unit of destiny is time the unit of destiny is time that means every man's destiny is a measure of time whatever you give your time to you are giving a part and a portion of your life and your destiny to whatever you give your time to you are giving your destiny to hallelujah so when it says teach us to number our days there are times that you can lose things there are times that you can lose people but you really lose when you lose time please pay attention through the pandemic there are people and companies and corporations and historically speaking there are people who have lost money there are people who have lost spouses there are people who have lost opportunities and strangely so they were able to recover back like job in the bible 42 and verse 10 of job it says and the lord restored the fortunes of job when he prayed for his friends and all his friends family and acquaintances who had left him they returned back and all of them brought a portion of money and gave him the later part of job's life was restored but there is one thing that when you lose you have really lost time so it says teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom now please pay attention i said there are four stages in every man's life stage number one is called the morning stage of your life morning from the word good morning morning m-o-r-n-i-n-g the morning stage of your life this represents the first 25 years of every man's life the morning stage of your life represents the first 25 years of your life from age zero to age 25 is the morning stage of a man's life another word for it is the learning stage this is the stage where you are given room to prepare for destiny this is the stage of your life where you can make mistake and life will forgive you it is expected that at the first 25 years of your life certain things should have been in place under normal circumstances within the first 25 years of a man's life it is expected that you should have found salvation in the lord jesus christ it's expected that you should have discovered purpose and destiny it is expected that you should have gone through the system that educates your mind 25 years under normal circumstance is enough to give yourself the basic requirements in terms of education under normal circumstances it can also be expected and allowed that within the first 25 years of your life that you are already supporting a family please pay attention are we together it's called the morning stage of your life those who make impact those who excel in life and etch their names in the sands of time are usually men and women who begin preparation for destiny early can i tell you this a young boy who gives his life to jesus christ say at age four or five has the opportunity to go to a good school early has the honor of being mentored by a good pastor godly responsible parents and has the opportunity to be cultured into greatness you cannot compare the result of that person with someone who will get born again say at age 40 yes god restores but time would have gone are we together this is a message and this level may not be applicable to me if not all of us here but i can tell you there are people within your care who are coming so there is a portion of this message that is not for you 
you must take this message back and call your children and all who are within your care and say in this men's conference i found a message that you need the learning stage the morning stage like you see the bible or geography or at least that as we know tells us that the sun rises in the morning once it is night you begin to see the breaking of day it looks like it's not quite clear but eventually the sun begins to rise the first 25 years of your life please look up the most trouble in people's lives starts from this time most carelessness god forbid but a child who becomes a trouble and a nuisance to society it is at this stage of the life that the devil captures them occultism all kinds of decadence starts at this stage of life lamentations 3 27 please give to us lamentations 3 let's pray up please lamentations chapter 3 and verse 27 the book of lamentations please read with me if you can find it now that is projected if you can see it ready together let's read one to read it is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth the yoke of destiny the yoke of prayer if you find a man of god who is vibrant and serving god he utilized the morning stage of his life in fasting in praying in discipline in diligence let's look at the life of jesus at age 12 when his colleagues and contemporaries were running around like young men who were just getting into teenage jesus was at the temple learning and preparing for an excelling life hear me if you miss the first 25 years of your life call the morning stage of your life then already you are behind time and you must obtain extra grace from god to catch up in life and destiny are we together that leads me to the second stage of life is called the afternoon stage the next 25 years of your life from age 26 to age 50 is the afternoon stage of your life please write it down from age 26 to age 50 is the afternoon stage of your life the sun shines brightest in the afternoon that means this is a stage of maximum kingdom impact in terms of destiny you have the most agility in terms of physical strength to do all that you have to do for destiny you are a man of god this is a stage where you have the strength and the energy to travel around the world preaching the gospel you are a businessman you are a politician you are a leader this is the strength the stage where you find strength it's a state of execution where the things you have learned the first 25 years of your life you now have an opportunity to live by those values live by those principles are we getting blessed that means a man who gets born again at age 30 or 35 he may still deceive himself that i am a young man but as far as the unit of destiny which is time is concerned time is already against you because it takes time to know god it takes time to learn the word it takes time to build a prayer bank that your destiny will feed from it takes time to build relationships there are people today who are in their 30s 40s 50s who are still going around saying i still have time i still have time no impact you're not changing anybody's life there is nobody who is rejoicing because you are alive the afternoon stage I must walk the works of him who has sent me while it is day. Why? For the night cometh. Not may come, it will come. Are we still together? 
find out most of the people who made impact in history and even in the history of our nation find out those most of those who led during the military regime most of them led as a 30 or 40 they were already in the helm of affairs do you know there is a spirit in africa that we must cancel the spirit of lateness it, it looks like it's a cause when you achieve things early if a young man builds a house at 23 people say where did you get the money from if a young man is able to raise people and bless people early it looks like there is a cause we break that cause in the name of jesus christ how many of you have seen please i'm not getting you emotional but some of you here are parents how many of you have seen young men in their 40s 45 still staying with their parents and inconveniencing them and believing they are entitled a 45 year old man still calling himself a child running back to parents in old age these parents are having their pension trying to live their lives and here comes grown adults who believe their children let me tell you where that error comes from the error comes when we begin to give children a mindset that you are still small anybody this is my definition of an adult an adult is anybody who has his mind developed enough to think make decisions and suffer the consequences of that decisions in my world that is an adult an adult is not one who is 18 years the moment you sustain the ability and the intelligence to make decisions that have consequences and you are matured enough to face the consequences you are an adult this idea of letting people know you are a last born you are a child you are a child 40 years you are a child 50 years you are a child is what makes people to continue to grow and yet they are not productive if I'm offending you I'm sorry but if you are with me say amen are we together the afternoon stage very quickly let me talk about the next stage It's called the evening stage the morning stage is the stage of preparation the afternoon stage is the stage of execution the evening stage represents the next 25 years of your life from 51 to 75 is called the stage of legacy and consolidation the third stage which is evening at this stage the sun is already going down is called the stage of legacy and the stage of consolidation from a human and a biological standpoint from 51 years down to 75 you may not have the kind of physical strength you may not have the zest the physical energy that a young man would have it is expected that at that stage of life you should have spent your life impacting your world blessing humanity it is at this stage you begin to build institutions that preserve your values and outlive you that is the stage where you begin to document your persuasion it is expected that at that stage you should be so successful you can now turn back from the lens of your experience you can begin to mentor the younger generation coming showing them the pitfalls the things that you saw the mistakes you made allowing them to see your scars so that they can correct their ways here's how it works please look up young people have time but they do not have wisdom and experience so they waste time old people do not have time but they have profound wisdom and experience mentorship becomes that platform that adds wisdom to the time of the young man Are we learning
one day many years ago i saw an old woman very old woman and she was carrying you know a stacks of firewood very long wood and she lifted that thing and put it on her head and the woman was walking very old woman looking wrinkled and tired and i asked a question where are her children where are these mama's children that will allow the mother in old age it is not a good thing to be in old age and turn back and there is no shoulder that you can lean on because everybody you raised was a failure everybody you raised became an amber everybody you raised could not live a meaningful life somebody shout god forbid shout it one more time may god forbid it there are people today it's not old age that sends them to their grave depression and pain as they watch their children and they said i labored i sent you abroad i sent you everywhere i did the best i know to do while i'm speaking there may be some of you right now who are going through this pain because your children currently biologically or those under your care may be a description of the least that i'm stating find comfort we are going to pray we will ask for the mercy of god to invade the, everybody's home and correct anything that any tree that has not been planted by god it must be uprooted in this conference we are discussing the stages of life the morning stage first 25 years of a man's life the stage of preparation the stage of mistakes the stage of learning the next 25 years 26 to 50 the stage of execution the stage of maximum impact the evening stage is the stage of legacy and consolidation it is expected that at this stage you would not be alone because you would have raised many people you would have raised people who become extensions of your ideologies you have raised people who become extensions of your convictions you know you are a leader when someone is following you and the key to commanding followership is influence the key to influence is the results the consistency of results that you produce which show us the excellency of your convictions the final stage is called the night stage the night stage is anything from 76 years until the day that you transit out of this world from 76 years is called rest is the night stage night does not mean you are dead anything from 76 years you should have given the world everything that you were sent to do according to god's design if you utilize your time well by the time you clock 76 and further you should have given your all and your best to creation god now gives you the honor to turn back and reap the fruits of your investment can i tell you this respectfully speaking and with every sense of honor and regard every one of us seated here under the sound of my voice belongs to one of these four categories right now and the holy spirit even as we seek to do exploits is helping us to assess our work if you are between 0 to 25 what have you done are you spending time learning or you're allowing the devil waste away your destiny most people receive jesus christ very late in their life and they don't have the time to learn and make any impact most people discover purpose late if at all they discover it they're unable to do much why am i sharing this with us because impact is a product of time and it's a product of destiny and we must obtain grace from god 
to know what stage we are in now so that if you wasted the first 25 years of your life and maybe the second stage of your life you can use this third stage and obtain grace from God and catch up restoration is a possibility are we together yes now can I use any two of you come my friend come let me use this gentleman you come you come please quickly just come stand here and stand here everybody please watch my friend you stand here let's assume that this man is 45 years everyone say 45 years let's assume this one is 21 years everybody say 21 now assuming they are friends two of them are friends for whatever reason this young man has an opportunity to be lazy or serious he can play games with his life he can still repent he's still within the first 25 years but this our man here is already 45 years he has already missed and even wasted a first portion of his life do you think they should behave the same way who is in a more urgent situation so by the time this one is hanging around with friends just laughing away his destiny from morning till night is it wise for this man to join him in the name of relationship this one already has probably four children already grown no bills for their destiny he's making a mistake those children are about to be arm robbers because of pressure this one is still battling with his studies he will get to campus and meet a fellowship four square there he will give his life to jesus and repent before graduation he will become a responsible man but this one already there is already an emergency this one is not yet married he has the opportunity to correct mistakes this one already has a wife and children who should be more serious about destiny and we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you and we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you it's in you lord it's in you lord we know there's more that's found in you when kofi annan was u.n secretary general he made a statement during children's day he said do not allow children suffer the consequences of the carelessness of their parents some of us with every sense of respect and regard when we were at the morning stage of our lives we were not even born again we had not met jesus we were still in idol worship living in sin living in all kinds of things i'm not here to condemn you no but i'm to show you the urgency of the moment if you get born again at 40 it will take another five to six years under proper mentorship to understand the ways of god if you happen to stay in church and you are under a sound pastor before you begin to learn on prayer on fasting on giving on responsibility it takes time to learn these things why am i teaching you this because there are some of us with every sense of respect who are afraid of disciplining our children for many people we feel and and with every sense of respect and regard have you paid attention to our teenagers at the level of disdain they have for the things of god you mention God among teenagers and they push you away all they want is apps phone internet social media am i saying it is wrong no but i am telling you if there is no restoration of a structure of godliness and discipline one generation of neglect is all it takes and will lose everything we are labored for you see these are young teenagers in church 
while a service is going on someone is even crying they are there um, um, what they call that thing they are, they are now you know sending a text oh i am this i am that snapping themselves there has to be a restoration because they are wasting the time and can i encourage us by the spirit of god let me encourage every parent here if the only thing you give your children is education and money you did not bless them give them jesus give them morals don't just give them money give them what made you you don't just give them a car and a phone don't just send them abroad give them the discipline and the value and the traits that made you exceptional if that's all you give them and you do not give them money you give them everything do not allow the pressure of society to come upon you to say what are you giving your child my own child is driving a jeep your own child is walking afoot their spirits and their minds are the most important components to their success you can give an irresponsible child look at what happened to solomon his father labored and gave him something free of charge because it was so free he became so hedonistic at the end of solomon's life he was already a, a depraved man he wrote songs of solomon as a man who had fallen everything my eyes saw i wanted he said at the end of his life here was his conclusion vanity upon vanity all is vanity when solomon died and his son rehoboam became king elders came and met him and said you are a small boy but let's talk to you your father oppressed us can you reduce it a bit he listened to the elders and went and called his peers and the pair said punish them may god grant grace that every man's child here will become a reason of consolation when you are old let me tell you this discipline does not kill discipline does not kill for as long as they are under your roof they must have your god for as long as they are under your roof this is not abuse we need to be careful what society defines as abuse you cannot be under my roof and not serve my god everybody under my roof serves the god that i serve A young man cannot return back home as a teenager by 1 a.m. in the night. Open the gate and enter and, and he has friends speaking outside. My father is a rich man. Is he responsible? 31st December, I was in Joss. And my younger brother was not feeling too strong. And so I have a brother, an elder brother, a cousin. He's a consultant gynecologist. And so he just quickly went to a pharmacy. I was driving myself, 31st, just to get some injections or so, and then to go and treat him. And I sat inside the car so that he would go and get it. I said, if I come out and they know I'm the one, they will mob me in this place. So let me remain quiet inside the car. And I saw, I saw some young people. I thought they were going for crossover, like a crusade. They were at least without exaggeration they should not be less than 300 and i saw these people moving around and tears began to come down from my eyes over 90 percent of those people now i'm not here to condemn no but if you see your child in that state you will start crying and i told myself something i said out of these people by the time all the elders who have values and character pass on these are the ones that will be left what kind of discipline will they give their children respectfully speaking let me tell you this this is the mistake of the west today in the 60s and the 70s when the power of god was moving strongly across the west they had mothers who were women of prayer even though they were not so educated they loved god and satan tried to bring those people down when he found out he could not bring them down he gave up on that generation and he came back to grow with their children they made one mistake remember when pharaoh moses advocated the exodus of the nation of israel he said you can go but leave your children behind moses said no way all of us will go together the west today with every sense of respect the little children of yesterday are the presidents of today so they can throw God out of schools, throw God out of everywhere. Because you see, 
whoever grows with you is the one you will be loyal to as for me and my house someone prophesied say as for me and my house we will serve the lord say it with intention as for me and my house make up your mind that as you return back home by the grace of god call for a family meeting and tell your children we are going to be intentional about loving god in this family we are going to be intentional about our spiritual life let it be that i taught you the ways of god if you make up your mind to ignore and reject god then let it be for you jesus in john 17 said all that you have given me i have kept and none is lost except the son of perdition can i tell you this please write this down let's define fulfillment as i attempt to round up thank you sirs fulfillment is defined as the satisfaction please write it down and if possible underline the word satisfaction fulfillment is defined as the satisfaction derived from knowing the satisfaction derived from knowing that you lived your life effectively fulfillment is the satisfaction derived from knowing that you lived your life effectively serving the purposes of God and being a blessing to humanity the fulfillment derived from knowing that you lived your life effectively comma serving the purposes of God and being a blessing to humanity that is the definition of fulfillment I am fulfilled only to the degree to which I know that I have lived my life effectively. I have transitioned across these stages of my life. Morning preparation, afternoon execution, evening legacy and consolidation and rest. If I know that I have transitioned effectively, using my life, my wisdom, my talents to first serve the purposes of the kingdom and then being a blessing to humanity with the gift and the grace God has given me the name given to that satisfaction is fulfillment let me tell you sincerely success in itself does not bring fulfillment there has to be satisfaction that money cannot buy there has to be a satisfaction that awards cannot buy i submit to you people of god by the grace and the privilege of god i look at my life today and with every sense of humility i can bow my knees to the god of my salvation and thank him and i can say i'm living my life effectively i wake up for a reason and i go back to bed for a reason I thank God for the privilege of transforming a generation. I thank God for the privilege of revealing Jesus. Someday, if Christ tarries, we will not be here, but we will live with honor and we will live with pride. Today, a, my great mentor, Miles Munro, he's gone to be with the Lord, but he's still alive in us. Abel, though dead, yet speaketh. This is a call. For some of us, it's a caution. One more time, for some of us, it's an encouragement. For some of us, it's a drive to move forward with our lives. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. What is the wisdom there? To take cognizance of your days and the passage of time. That one day, we may not be here again if Christ tarries. We must begin to build systems and structures that will outlive us. This is more than just living real estate. Thank God for real estate. Thank God for all of these things. But the greatest legacy that you leave is the value system that enthrones Christ. A value system that produces responsible people. That is a legacy indeed. 
Many have left money. And when they transitioned and left, they left children and relatives who fought over that money, killed themselves. Many have left accolades. But the greatest legacy that you can leave, the greatest legacy you can leave is not a will that shows that they should occupy your estate when you are not there. It is a legacy of godliness. The legacy of discipline. Inculcating values that become an extension to what you represent. I round up with this. This morning the Lord again in addition to our exploits is calling us that if our life is only if our hope is only in this life the bible says we are of all men most miserable we have to begin to live number one with eternity in view but number two with succession in view are we together let our children be able to tell us tomorrow thank god for daddy that someday when we are out of the shores of this world we can look at our children when we stand before jesus and say the same way we celebrated ourselves don't be with your children at home and then when you are in heaven you see them in hell and they say daddy i would have come to jesus if only you told me you were busy around trying to look for money it is my prayer that as i stand before him I will not stand alone that i will see a multitude of people who came to jesus and here's what they will tell you i am alive that was changed thank you for giving to the lord i am so glad you came It is time to think about our lives. Let us think about how we are living our lives right now. Ask yourself a question. The way I am going about my life, will my children be blessed? My final words for you in this session and this conference. Live by three principles. Please write it down. Number one, the fear of the Lord. You want to do exploits in this kingdom, you must be governed by the fear of the Lord. It's called Yirat Adonai, the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the spirit of reverence. The fear of the Lord. Number two, conscience. You must live by conscience. As you treat your children, as you treat your workers, as you treat your subordinates, conscience number three a sense of posterity you must live by these three factors if your life is to be efficient again i repeat number one you must live by the fear of the lord number two you must live by conscience number three you must live with a sense of posterity the man you ignore today because he's poor and relegated to the background may be the man in old age who will help you and hold your hands the child you may be insulting today because he's not doing well in school may be that rejected stone that in old age will stand by you and remain with you is somebody ready to pray so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom please rise up on your feet For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. I choose the way of the Lord. I choose the way of the Lord. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom.
stop. I choose the way of the Lord. Now, I know that this is a gathering of men. But please allow me to make a very serious altar call right now. I believe that there are men of excellence, men of valor who are standing here. And they are saying, Apostle, hearing you speak alongside the other speakers, the Holy Spirit has been speaking to me. I have made mistakes with several stages in my life. I want to get it right for my sake, the sake of my children, the sake of my children's children. You may be here and you were invited for this conference, but you've never truly made Jesus Lord of your life. I assure you time is passing number two you may be here and you have given your life to Jesus Christ but in all honesty the way you have been living your life you know that this is not a legacy enough for children we are a family of faith wherever you are give me the honor of praying with you before I speak over everyone and we're done please wherever you are we have two minutes i will count one to five i'd like you to honorably leave your seat and just come and stand in front of the stage here and i want to pray with you wherever you are run like there's fire on the mountain don't come looking at me come to jesus christ one i'm yours i'm yours i'm yours forever i'm yours i'm yours cry before your maker while you stand here, have mercy upon me, oh God. For the sake of my children, let me not leave a legacy that destroys my children. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours. My life is yours, is yours, is yours forever. It's yours, it's yours, it's yours. Keep praying. Whatever you ask of me, whatever you ask of me, I surrender. Oh, there are men who want to surrender to Jesus. You are not the only head of your house. Christ must be the head of you to be an effective head. Lord, I have tried. I have tried. I'm seeing a repetition of what I complain about for my father. My children keep complaining about me. I know something is wrong. I take responsibility in this conference. Are you praying? Everyone, please, let's join them as we pray. Just spend two, three minutes alone with God. Alone with God. We are not praying as a crowd. Every man before his maker. Lord, search my life. The way I am living. Transiting through these stages of my life. The morning stage, the afternoon stage, the evening stage. Did I maximize my morning stage effectively? Did I maximize my afternoon stage effectively? Am I maximizing my evening stage? Do I have a legacy that I can give generations to come? Please pray. Let's cry before the Lord our maker. One, two minutes and we're done. We are making commitments before the Lord. Four square. You are man of excellence. At the end of your life, there are three things that matter. Your relationship with Jesus. Your relationship with your family. And the efficiency of your fulfilling destiny. hallelujah now please listen to me please look at me everyone especially for those of you here young and old i respect and i honor you i'm going to separate you into two categories those who have never given their life to jesus christ and are saying apostle i want you to lead me to jesus christ please move to my right which is your left just right here move here and then the remaining people are like you to move here please quickly let's celebrate them as they do if you are in that category just remain there where you are 
all those who are giving their lives to Jesus, can you move here? Just move here. Let me be with you. Every man here, we are going to sing one song. You will hear me sing it once and you will join me. Let it be a pledge that for the rest of my life, I will be a successful man, but I will not be successful alone. I will not only give birth to children and run a family, but I will lead them to Jesus in my lifetime. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. Are you ready? I've decided. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. No man forsake me. Still I will follow, no turning back, no turning back. Though men forsake me, still I will follow, no turning back, no turning back. Pray this prayer with me. If you are making Jesus Lord of your life and those who are following online or will be listening to this by way of broadcast say after me Lord Jesus please say it again from the depth of your are you praying hallelujah hallelujah first samuel 12 16 i want to speak over your life now please give us first samuel 12 16. first samuel 12 16 and then you receive this word of prophecy first samuel please write this scripture and never forget it first samuel chapter 12 and verse 16. Verse 6, sorry, 1 Samuel 12 and verse 6, not 16, 12, 6. 1 Samuel 12, 6. And Samuel said unto the people, It is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron. So men do not just do exploits, they don't just move. There is a spiritual agency. You don't just become a CEO. You don't just become a man of God. You don't just have influence among kings. It is the Lord that advanced Moses. It is the Lord that advanced the men in Foursquare. In the name that is above all names. I speak over your life. Everything that has stagnated you. So that you will not rise. I call on my, the God of my covenant. This morning, this afternoon. Go forward in the name of Jesus. Go forward in the name of Jesus. I declare exploits in business, exploits in ministry, exploits in family, exploits in your career, in the name of Jesus. And anyone who has vowed that over their dead body for you to rise, may the earth open and swallow them. Hear me? Anyone here who is due for promotion, and for whatever reason people have used sentiments to sit on what is yours i stand by the prophecy i overturn i overturn 
I overturn, I overturn until you sit on your rightful position. The spirit of untimely death that haunts the men in families and kill people prematurely in the mighty name of Jesus, I decree and declare you will enjoy long life. Your children will enjoy long life. I pray for every man here. May you never bury your children. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every project you started and mysteriously it has refused to finish. Whether it is a building project, the Bible says the hand of Zerubbabel that began this work. I in the name of Jesus every force that is stopping completion of your projects I stand by the God of heaven receive the grace for completion every man here who has not been able to have a child you are getting old and people are saying what is happening I call upon the God of my covenant the one who sent me here I stand by the God of Jeshuron I prophesy to you according to the time of life return with your miracle children listen I pray for you every door that has been closed over your life you have become a reproach to men you look at your contemporaries even those you raise are now better than you I stand upon this altar I in the name of Jesus, anyone here who is a reproach and an object of shame, receive speed in your life, speed in your destiny, speed in your life, speed in your destiny, speed in your life, speed in your, life. Speed in your destiny. altar carrying your name to say you will not rise family altars foundations men that have vowed and fraternized with dark powers in the name that is above all names every altar catches fire now please take seriously what is happening here this is not entertainment God is changing your life Enough is enough. You have to get angry. It's time to move forward. Let me rebuke the spirit of poverty. Anyone here, you have seen it as a pattern in your family. All educated, but nobody rises. Nobody today has a respectable job or some means of livelihood. By the God of heaven, I prophesy to you here at this conference. May the grace that empowers, let it rest like a mantle upon you. What your father could not do, what your mother you may be a rejected stone. Nobody has been able to pass through you in the name of Jesus. I cancel evil reports. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Psalm 3 says, how many are they that rise up against me? He said, many are they that says, where is your God? He said, but thou, O Lord, you are a shield for me. My glory, the lifter up of my head. Everything that has brought your head down. Four square, rise up to a new level. Let the men in this ministry, this commission, rise to a new level. Hear me? Anyone who has exchanged your destiny, Madika Toske Lebata, you are living your destiny. You know this is not your life. What I'm seeing in my dreams and visions is different from what is happening. In the name of Jesus, I scatter every demonic altar.
we are wrapping up listen the bible says and jabez was more honorable than his brethren but that was not how he was the mother called him jabez because she bore him in sorrow the man's life was not moving forward one day he got angry and he says oh that thou wouldest bless me there was a man in scripture when they were giving birth to him the midwives made a mistake because of the mistake of a midwife his destiny was crippled his name Mephibosheth on account of his deformity he could not do much but when the season of his appearance came the Bible says and David said is there any man who is in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake and he called on Ziba he says go to Lodeba and he went and brought Mephibosheth I pray for you what your effort could not do what the limitations of your background brought for you may God raise destiny help us to accelerate you destiny help us in career spiritual destiny help us financial destiny help us in the name of Jesus Christ and finally I pray for you anything that will take away your relationship with God anything that will make you live a life that seems meaningful on earth and end up in hell in the name that is above all names I cut you away from it forever the man in four square will be men of spirituality with excellence the man in four square will be men of great achievement with high level spirituality oh it will be said that we have seen that the men in four square are men that carry favor men that carry wisdom may god raise national leaders out of the men in four square may god raise international leaders of the men in four square let institutions arise that will solve the problems of our nation from the men in this place and for the remaining part of this conference i decree and declare that every fire that comes upon this altar let it add to your exploits by this time next year return 10 times better by this time next year return a house owner by this time next year return a man with meaningful children responsible children some of you return grandfathers in the name of jesus christ for some of you by this time next year you will be streaming from abroad because god would have so lifted you Let the name of the lord be praised I want to sincerely appreciate the leadership of the men we have spent a very short time hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you